yesterday I picked up Sean Graham from the airport in Reno and then in the car we got through some interesting line of questions and as usual when interesting questions start happening especially sequentially with like a process he was talking about I was like whoa 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 let's make this an interview let's share this line of questioning with other people so that they can do a similar experience for themselves or for people they care about right so I think I only got through like the first question when I said that and I was like, I think we actually should pause this and yeah. do this live because yeah. if they hear my real answers, if they hear your real answers to these things, mm. it could inspire them. It could um, kind of give them some ideas of yeah. how to answer them for themselves and yeah. realize the power of the process of these questions. Mm. And I'm at a really interesting point in life right now. You know, the saddest I've ever been, but also... Uh, the most open mm -hmm. I've ever been, the most vulnerable I've ever been. So mm -hmm. the answers to these questions will be unique. Yeah. Where in the past, I don't know if I would have had much that I wanted to grow with or talk about yeah. in like a moon baby sort of way, like a depth of my soul crying sort of way. Where right now, I'm like I'm like in it to win it <laughs> with the moon babiness. Yeah. I'm all about the moon babiness. The moon babiness. Oh, okay. So. I think context of where these these questions came from um, is I was I was doing a series of interviews with people f for a, a project years back, and there was a lot of non-professional actors, um, and we wanted to still get to the core of their journey and get emotional kind of performances out of them without requiring them to read a script or memorize lines. And so the best way to do that was just to get to their emotions um, and have them just speak from the heart. And so uh, three questions that can reveal a lot um, kind of thing. Um, and, and it was very powerful and that's why we started, I, I brought it up the other day, um, in this kind of transitory period or as you're navigating change in your life. Um, to kind of reprioritize self, um, how you, what you value, what you want to take yourself and that kind of thing. So um, that's a bit of the context. So not just a random reason we're going to sit down and answer these three mysterious questions that are very simple. So um, you... You tell me when you would like to to jump into that. Um. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. So, first, what are the three things you love most about yourself? The number one today that's coming up is how deeply I feel life mm -hmm. and always have uh, for better or for worse yeah so the depth that I allow myself to experience ups and downs right and like I said in the beginning this is the first big down that I've really uh, like mm -hmm. been able to feel I think maybe I've shielded myself in the past or not allowed myself to open so that there wasn't as big of a down potential this is the most but that being said, I'm very appreciative of my willingness. Um, and I'm not sure if that's like a human thing or like my soul's willingness to experience the depth of everything. And I, I very consciously chose through the last two, three, four years to open more and more and more and commit more and more and more to different things, mm -hmm. knowing that it's it's one of those one of those sayings i know there's a thousand clichés about it but it's like you'll never score if you don't if you don't shoot or if mm -hmm. you don't uh, try yeah. right yeah and maybe before i tried less and i i committed less and still was successful in various things but now in these last few years i've really i've held myself back at various points but ultimately i pass that barrier and commit more to things whether it's loving the kids harder spending more time with them or working on riskier businesses or spending uh, just just trying things that may or may not work but really committing to them mm -hmm. and trying and giving my all whether it's editing a video 
answering questions like this mm-hmm. even you know like i feel like i'm going to try to give you the most honest answers that i can yeah. and be as truthful as i can about it so yeah experiencing emotional depth that's one thing mm-hmm. like i love that i'm allowing that yeah and that i'm capable of that you know and i feel like that's a new level that's been opened up second Thru- thing through this through the last couple years the last couple years yeah really choosing to love instead of protect myself so kind of like put myself out there rather Mm -hmm. than uh, keep myself in you know which is tough because there was times where i'm like i don't have enough energy to love more and i found it i found the energy right or i don't have the solutions to my business problems um because of these other things and i said well i'll find i'll figure them out Mm. you know i'll find those answers and i did you know um yeah everything actually ended up perfectly okay so Mm. that's great the second thing is probably my um willingness to try uh that's something i've always had willingness to try for sure but not necessarily willingness to open up yeah so those kind of go hand in hand but my willingness to try is big um i've told you this many times Mm. and people maybe if they followed more of my journey i've done lots of things Mm -hmm. and most of them i've done poorly at first but i try really hard and i commit really hard and eventually i become reasonable at things i i hope right (laughs) that is Um, yeah exactly sometimes it's delusional (laughs) you know maybe i'm not good at them but i try hard enough and i'm proud enough to where i i consider it to be uh worthy at some point yeah in my past I've gone to the point where I'll be like a B-level player, like Mm. pretty good, but not the best. And as I've gotten older and as I've done this committing harder, I feel like I've grown to be that A-minus player now. Mm. And I'm really, I'm excited for the time when I feel like I'm ready to be an A-plus player and I'll allow myself to go there. And like you said with your ROTC story that I'm sure we'll get into at Mm. some point, where I don't know if I've ever completely wanted to be the ultimate winner Mm -hmm. but maybe at some point i will Mm. and i feel that that i've allowed myself to kind of climb the ranks of various things and skill sets and then the third one is uh how much i care about people i think growing up i felt very disconnected from community Mm -hmm. and the world at large and that was an internal thing it wasn't a truth but i just felt like that so i gathered communities and i still do to this day And because of my understanding of how everybody feels lonely, Mm -hmm. especially with friendships, you know, with the way we've distanced over the growth of social media and the internet and everything, people really want to feel connected. Mm -hmm. So I make it a pretty big, important part of my life to connect to other people Mm -hmm. because I, I care so much about myself and them. And I think there's a nice harmony there Mm -hmm. of how much I care of both. You know, I do take care of myself. I've, I don't think I've been the person that won't take care of myself. Mm-hmm. But I maybe I skid the line sometimes of like, I'm just barely keeping up with myself, but taking care of other people as well. Yeah. Yeah. So th- that's three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Emotional commitment, trying and caring, caring about people and myself. And now with that side of things what are the three things that terrify you that you're most afraid of and i know mm-hmm. you don't like the word terrified mm-hmm. As, mm-hmm. we <laughs> talked uh, about this a little bit yesterday <laughs> yeah as a, a movie but we found out through I, i'll name one for you mm-hmm. terror is your b- biggest fear you know <laughs> yeah yeah so we discovered that i'm actually terrified of being terrified because what i told sean yesterday when he asked me this question is you know, I, when I think of terrified, I think of frozen in place or shocked or unable to perform or do anything. And I was like, I would never allow that to happen to myself. And he was like, well, that's interesting. Maybe you're scared of being scared. And I was like, that's probably true. I'm probably really scared of yeah. getting to a place where I am incapable. And that's maybe part of the reason, like a huge life motto for me is how do you become unstoppable? Don't stop. That's like something that I've been known for for many years Mm -hmm. now is Mm -hmm. saying that quote. And I don't know if that's a bad thing, but it is a thing Mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And that's to be explored, you know, maybe through this process, but also in future years. And 
I'm I'm also something I'm I'm figuring out what the words to use. But number two would be impatience, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, I'm very mm-hmm. I'm very scared of not moving fast enough or being still, which is similar to the terror. I'm scared of being scared. I'm scared of not living up to my potential every moment of every day. Mm-hmm. I have I've calmed a bit, you know, with like meditation and with community and being present with people. Mm-hmm. But I still looking at my life recently really intensively, I'm a very impatient person, I would say now from my own perspective and I want to I don't know if I want to change that, but I definitely want to be like bring more awareness to how that's impacting mm-hmm. my life. And I'm already noticing constantly mm-hmm. almost everything I do revolves around how long it will take and how I can do it faster. Almost every decision, which is really, I, I had no awareness of this until hmm. maybe a week ago or two weeks ago. So my whole life's probably been that all the way from playing like yeah. World of Warcraft and being yeah. the fastest quester and leveler and being like, like I remember my dad getting yeah. very upset at me <laughs> when I was like 13 or 14 for questing too fast. Was he playing? Or he was playing with me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why he was upset with the you yeah. Going too, you were just, yeah, it was yeah, going okay. too fast. So, <laughs> it, you know, there's, there's maybe some yeah. stuff to figure out there. So that's number two. And then what am I afraid of? I know it's like a classic one and maybe this is a cop out, but maybe I'm afraid that I'm not as great as I think I am. Mm -hmm. The imposter syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Pretty, you know, but pretty deep. Oh yeah. I mean, it's always deep. Yeah. Yeah, It's (laughs) it's always deep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's part of the reason I'm impatient because I want to make sure that, yeah. I, I either am or am mm. not. You know, when yeah. I've, I've done so many, I tried like hip hop dancing, yeah. I did rock climbing, <coughs> you know, I did uh, video and film, right? Yeah. I've done interviews, I've done documentary work, I've done, uh, you know, network marketing, I've done commission, 100% commission sales, personal training, healed injuries. I mean, I've made music, I was a musician, I've done a lot of things and at least half of those I was pretty bad at, Mm -hmm. you know, and it took a long time to get good at. And then a few of those things I was like good at, and then I got pretty great at, Mm -hmm. but I guess ultimately the fear is that the things I want to be great at, I I can't be or won't be, or Mm -hmm. don't have the awareness of. So for instance, I thought I was like a great uh, partner Mm, mm. and yeah maybe not always I actually can't say the other part yeah I know I tried for you (laughs) the kids Mm. Mm. hmm hmm But ultimately, ultimately, I think that's where the strengths come from, Mm -hmm. is because of those fears, you make up for it, Mm -hmm. right? So I always say, like, I'll try harder than anyone. Yeah. And so in thinking of that right now, let's go back to those things you love most about yourself. (laughs) Yep. So you're impatient. But you do try constantly. You are afraid of being an imposter in the things that matter most to you, in being a partner and a father. That's also why you feel so intensely and why you love that about yourself and why you share that. 
like now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. We started with love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We understood why you love those aspects of yourself. Maybe a little bit more. Because it's what keeps you facing your fears as often as possible um, and so these traits that you've either developed or worked to um, or the story that you continuously come back to whenever you're telling yourself who you are those core tenets are, are there because of <laughs> we can blame the fear and we can also give credit to the love so You know, um, your phrase of how do you be unstoppable? Just don't stop. How do you ensure you're a, a good partner or performer of any side? Just, just do it. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. do it, right? Yeah. So, thinking of that now, of what to just do, let's go further. What do you want to have done by the Just time like you tell. die? <laughs> okay. Let me. Oh, gosh. Well, there's an example of one of the things I love about myself. What was that question? What do I want to have done before I die? Did you that, just ask that question? Yes. Yeah. Because we've asked you, what do you love about yourself? I want to be... We asked you, yeah. what are you most afraid of? Yeah, and totally. You... And this leads to the strengths. <laughs> yeah, because I think about this a lot. I and what do you want to have lot. done? And I, this is what I say. Not what do you want to do before you die? Because I want to do a lot of things. But what do you want to have done by the time you are gone? Can you give me an example? Three things. Actions. Three things that you have done you up to you to define but you will do many things in life but what are the three things you need to have done um i'm going to give you the answer that comes first and then i'll give you the answer i think you might be looking for or you might say I need to answer I think I'm done I think I've already done those things I several years ago I was maybe 24 and I had helped many people heal themselves what I considered miraculously and I remember walking outside in California one day it was a beautiful day mm -hmm. I was in a big green park with trees and like kids playing in the pool nearby that I could hear and I just had this feeling of calm come over me and I said I might have died and I might be in heaven right now just with the amount of gratitude I had mm -hmm. for how I had impacted so many people's lives at that point already and how it felt to have done that yeah so ever since that moment that was a very intense moment for me of gratitude and like maybe a feeling of enlightenment of like that was the moment I was like, wow, I'm proud of who I've become or who this has become, mm -hmm. right? And ever since then, I've said everything else is icing on the cake. Like anything I do to help people or connect people or whatever it is um, was icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. So then I'll give you the second answer that's probably the one that you might be looking for. Um, what do I want to have done? I want to I like always look back and say I lived a really deep life, like a fulfilling life. So, like, challenges lead to fulfillment, right? Um, success leads to fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Joy leads to fulfillment. Sorrow, grief leads to fulfillment, right? As long as you don't run away from the good things or the bad things, I believe it's, it's quite fulfilling, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, I think, why those strengths are the way they are and why I've cultivated them like that. You know, the depth of experience mm -hmm. is in my anecdotal experience of life fulfillment mm -hmm. so i can't speak for like everybody but that's for me it yeah. seems like 
just like committing to things mm -hmm. is eventually what leads to the fulfillment whether it works or doesn't work mm -hmm. um and who's to say it works or doesn't work right yeah. but um so yeah i want to always look back and say wow i lived a really fulfilling life mm -hmm. yesterday this year right today mm -hmm. um so that's number one that's why this whole thing is called fulfillionaire mm -hmm. <laughs> number two I want to help other people feel more depth, which is why I'm in film and audio and all of this. It's why the dojo exists as well, mm -hmm. is increasing sensitivity. <clears throat> and, you know, I think the dojo mm. and this whole idea is a big reason why I'm feeling so much more these days is it's all about increasing sensitivity and helping people experience more depth out of life is yeah. will give them more fulfillment potentially. Right. So kind of all yeah. adds together. Yeah. So just more of that, yeah. just making more things, whether it's pieces of content that help people feel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Become more sensitive to things, which is counterintuitive. Yeah. And then third thing, I really, this sounds strange in my head, mm -hmm. but I'll say it out loud, which is, oh, <laughs> Oh, I've got like a, a new thing that popped in right before I said the other thing. I think I, I think I told you this yesterday, but since having a family, I now experientially understand mm -hmm. there's nothing more fulfilling than that because of the depth you're forced to explore as long as you don't shut yourself off to them mm -hmm. like kids you, you can't walk away from them yeah. you can't end that relationship you have to get through the hard times um, yeah. you have to constantly orient around the north star with them so it's something that you, you can't back away from so the depth is forced which is why it can be so beautiful and why it has been so beautiful for yeah. me So I'm not sure what that looks like in, in as far as answering the question, but mm -hmm. definitely having relationships through life where you commit to working through whatever, because as with the children, the best relationships, relationships are cultivated uh, through being unstoppable, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, and just yeah continuing no matter what yeah and figuring it out because yeah that's why the relationship with them is so beautiful it's because there's been hard times but there's also been good times you know i was editing that the video about the kids yeah. and it's like i'll go from one like super happy memory and then i go to the next clip and they're like screaming and crying i'm like oh my god that was three hours later the same day wow yeah the range of <laughs> emotion there yeah. is beautiful yeah um and so if I may just try to repeat the three things that you would like to achieve is a feeling of fulfillment, um, a continuous feeling of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Let me, I, I want to dig into that one maybe a little bit, but I, I get where you're going, a sense of, of satisfaction and, and overall, no, I mean, you chose the word fulfillment, so we'll stick with that. Um, what you're saying now is maybe I, I don't want to put words in your mouth and so you're you're saying children you're saying family so it's 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 relationships that you continue to work on yeah through good and bad cool so <laughs> which family is one of those yeah, things. Yeah. yeah yeah so okay so deep relationships that require the good and bad because mm -hmm. without one it's it's just a superficial kind of thing right so deep relationships meaning all the chaos that comes along with those but not having only superficial relationships they say you get a couple friends in life right and so if you can try to maximize those deep friend relationships uh family familial relationships i guess that's kind of the goal for you um you 
mentioned helping people and you say this is where you feel done is that where you feel done with that specifically or there's always more yeah right so you've already done that let's you, th that's mm -hmm. that's done yep you, i'm not i'm asking yes. by the time you have if i died tomorrow i would be pretty happy but that's let's say something else yeah because you've already done that it can't be something you've okay. done you've done um, for now <laughs> for this yeah. exercise I don't know. Everything that comes up in my head kind of revolves around those other three. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're all just spin-offs of the same thing. Like, one thing that came up is, like, I want to help other people find a similar state of fulfillment mm -hmm. and realize the importance and significance of mm -hmm. that in their life. Yeah. But that's sort of tied to me just being fulfilled every day yep. it's like helping other people find that feeling and creating those deep relationships so i would say you've named one yeah <laughs> yep it's kind of all yeah centered around the same i don't it's a yeah yeah i mean i want to adventure and explore more and have great yeah. experiences with deep connections you know <laughs> like all over the world yeah. and like this how old are you? you know 32 okay so maybe you don't have all the answers yep. <laughs> for yep. what you want to have done uh there's but, like business things, but uh, they don't, they feel so shallow. Yeah. Compared to the other answers. But I'd say, okay, let's dig into that. Mm -hmm. So one I would say is relationships. You want strong, meaningful relationships with people, whether it's family, it's friends, it's a community that you curate, or you just help, right? And I'd say that's kind of one drive, one thing you want to have done, which you will continue to do, and you will feel that you could die happy because you know you're doing that. Um, I would say a second is this idea of building, of entrepreneurship, of of, of a, another type of legacy, uh, like an organizational legacy that you are trying to create, you know, through different avenues, you know, Thrive, you know, Doge, these are, it's, it's an aspect, there are aspects of this conglomerate, conglomerate of skip kind of thing. And so, um, I think that's something you want to have done, built something that you can leave behind that isn't just the people and, you know, to help. I know you don't know what that is, but you're doing many things around that space. Um, what could be something besides building community, besides strong those strong relations with the people? and. You may not have the answer for this now, or you know, maybe over this trip we can get closer to it. Um, but that's why you're not done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why you're not apathetic, even though you want to be. <laughs> you know. Um, I, I have, I have like, some answers, but I think you're right. Like, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, exactly. I, have, I have, like, answers, but they don't feel as substantial as right. the other ones. Yeah. And, and that's okay. You know, and that that's part of this as well. Uh, <laughs> but I just need the answer now. I'm impatient. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, three little questions that we ask ourselves, and we hear all the time. We, we, we ask ourselves almost daily, but, you know, taking the time to force, or having someone to maybe force you think through that, um, when you're at a point where you're trying to be honest with yourself, is hard. Um, because we can lie to ourselves when we're alone, nonstop, and most of the time, we do. We do. Yeah. <laughs> so even if they're good lies, you know, whatever. Um, my hair doesn't look that good. <laughs> it does long. It, I don't know. Well, so there's other lies, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so you know, I think having an observer there is always gonna change the outcome. You know not to get too metaphysical on it having extra observers a third plus you know a few extra uh, but I think 
there's something about someone else asking you those questions for yourself creates a sort of honesty that you feel in the moment because if they're going to go, you know, anyway, so that's why it's, it's every time I've done this, I think I've gotten tears and informally with family, with a random friend, like, um, you know, so it's, (laughs) what do you love about yourself? Yeah. What are you most afraid of? What are you most afraid of? And what do you want to have done? Before you die. Now, what do you want to do? But specifically, what do you want to have done? Done. (laughs) It just changes the perspective a little bit. It's looking past. It's looking reflectively on what you want to accomplish rather than what do you aspire to in the future, which can often be misguided or, you know, just... But usually when we're trying to be a 90-year-old self looking back and giving ourselves wisdom, we're much wiser than when we're the 20-year-old self saying what we want to be when we're 90. Um, same person, different conversation, same day. It's, um, and this is why, you know, as a cognitive scientist, I, I talked a lot about lying to ourselves and creating these realities because even through this conversation, this, these words we've been throwing around, your inner reality has shifted. (laughs) Um, there's a ding in your inner universe at the very least. And, uh, that's means you get the choice <laughs> to to redefine your fears as strengths or opportunities as the next initiative you need to or mission in life to accomplish you can ask yourself the same question tomorrow and it might be a little different but there'll be a lot that this is the same there'll be a lot that's the same in 10 years but again you may have done something can I share yeah. a story yeah uh, I was on, yeah. I was on a coaching call last night with Amrit, uh, Amrit Sandhu, yeah. who's been yeah, on the yeah, show, yeah. and uh, he told me this story about that. Mm. He told me a story about like how awareness changes you. Yeah. And this is an exercise of awareness, right? Yeah. And he said when he many years ago, his now wife Kay, who was his girlfriend then, mm. he used to litter. Like, he used to be a guy <laughs> who would, like, have a drink, walk on the street, like, I, throw it down on the ground. It's hard for me to imagine him, but okay. I know, I know. He's such a good dude. Yeah. But, he, yeah, he used to just, like, throw stuff on the ground. And yeah. one day, Kay was like, why yeah. do you do that? You know, that goes straight to the ocean. Yeah. And he was like, well, uh, oh. And he suddenly had a realization, and I hope he's okay with me sharing this. He's like, <laughs> he's like he envisioned, envisioned a turtle with a straw up its nose. Ooh, that, and the yeah. straw's, like, longer than the turtle, yeah. this little turtle, right? And he just suddenly felt bad. But he kept throwing stuff on the ground after that. Maybe he said, like, on, like, the sixth time he did it, he yeah. was, like, and then he would pick it up, and then he would find a trash can and put it away. And, yeah. and then he would do it a seventh time. And he'd walk away, and then he'd go back, and he'd pick it up, and he'd throw it in the trash can. Yeah. And until about the twelfth time, he would throw it down and then go and pick it back up and bring it in the trash can. And then about the twelfth time, the awareness had been getting and eating at him yeah. so much that he just started going straight to the trash can and not littering anymore. And that's the process of how awareness shifts you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's how it's shifting me, like with the idea of impatience. Yeah, yeah. Pearl 